Hello and welcome to Of The Press, the program where we dissect the national dailies and make sense of it. With me this morning to do that is Ekene Ezeji. Good morning, Ekene. Good morning. Good to have you this morning. Thank um, you. Shall we hit the ground running and up for review this morning is the first newspaper I have here, the Nation newspaper, and it says, uh, Nigeria launches battle to quash 9.6 billion verdict in UK. Federal government seeks extradition of P and ID owners son to face charges. AGFIG, CBN governor, EFC boss, information minister, all of them heading to London for this. Now, mutilated body of naval officer dumped inside well, suspects held. That's on page 12, already displayed on your screen there. And at the top uh, right is how judges, lawyers undermine ACJA on page 2. Senate to back Buhari on economy, page 10 of the Nation newspaper. Nigeria ends 28 trillion naira from VAT and others on page 44. Nigeria, England in a race for tomorrow on page 46. Makinde, Algon, clash over funds. You find that on page 37. And Amcon 6, I next back in to block debtors on page 8. Now, there's a picture story here, and it says, Why I stole two months old by kidnap uh, suspect. You find that on page four, and police bust syndicate on page six. Now, the situation of the Lagos Ibadan rail construction at section four, Ido local government area in Ibadan, or your state, that's a picture story, as you can see clearly there. So, I can. I where do we begin this morning? Gosh, there's so much. Uh, maybe I'll just deal with the peripheral stories before mm -hmm. I go for the PNID story mm -hmm. that's, that's on most of the newspapers. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when you hear stories about the, the naval officer who was dumped in a shallow a well, somebody. yeah, they basically chopped her up, put her in a Ghana must go, mm -hmm. and dumped her in a shallow well. And then you hear of um, a lady who stole someone else's child when mm -hmm. you read the stories. It makes you feel that, you know, maybe this is a sign of the times because you feel that things look... But actually, if you step back, you realize that maybe it's just that we're doing more reporting, more in-depth reporting. So, it's, you know, stories like this may have been going on all along, but suddenly now we're more aware of them because um, investigative journalism... You know, like the, the guy who confessed to the killings, I think. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the his name. Killer. Yeah, Something. in Port Harcourt. He has a fascinating name. Yeah, um, Gracious. Gracious. <laughs> gracious David um, gracious. that confessed to the killings. Um, you know, so it, it, it's a plus. I know it doesn't seem like that, but it's a plus in the sense that at least we're now hearing these people are human beings that we can identify. It's not, you know, people who die and then they're swept under the carpet. Their lives, it shows that their lives matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, the lady who stole the two-month-old, it's a bit pathetic in the sense that you have to feel sorry for her. She felt she really wanted a male child. Yeah, I'm sorry for her is limited in the sense that you ought not to steal anyone's child. Of course. Um, but she tricked this woman into you know, I'll hold your baby, please buy me a recharge card, help me. And she intentionally took this baby, but thankfully she was caught. Yeah. Thankfully the baby was returned or is being returned to the mother. So, you know, there are pluses. Yes, it's sad that we're hearing such stories, but it may be that they haven't increased in frequency, it's just that we are more aware and the, the reporting is much more but widespread. But another level, is that, isn't that also a revelation of more insecurity in the country? You know, That's what I'm saying. That's why I started off by forms. saying maybe it's that, but then you know, I, I pulled back a bit and said, maybe not. Maybe it's just that we're hearing more about them. It's mm. not that they're becoming more prevalent. So it's sad to hear them, but let's not necessarily possible. jump to the conclusion that things are getting really bad overnight, because that may not be the case. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at the issue of the PNID story, again, I continue on that, my optimism from last week. Mm. Um, we know, we're consolidating on our strategy. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm staying with, with our team here. We're consolidating on our strategy. We're now summoning the son. Yes, he, we know he's dead. The mm -hmm. McQueen is dead, but he has an heir. Mm. Um, and even though they're sending out loan sharks, so to speak, after us, the air, I'm sure, stands to gain something. So we're seeking his extradition. So we can also, you know, call him to order. So, you know, we too have our court system here. No matter how we look down on it, it, it works. It's functional. So let's put it to work. And, and as they go to the, uh, they go to the UK yeah. this week, I think the date uh, set is the 26th. Okay. We're looking forward to hearing something useful coming out of it because um, in the last few weeks, we seem to have stepped up our game. So mm -hmm. let's, let's hope that that reflects in the developments in the UK. Mm, talking about good news, part of what we, I mean, we should be happy about is the fact that we also have stayed on this story, even as a nation. It's yes. not one of those that will just disappear. No, no, uh, 9.6 billion is not going, <laughs> it's not going not to disappear. Go <laughs> no, it's I not going to go anywhere. Mm, yeah. I agree. Mm. Um, so I think that's... Uh, I oh. mean, the other stories. 
this thing. Yeah, the work has now getting 30, yes, 30, and is saying, yes, this is because there, it Gigi. seems that this is coming at a crucial time, mm. you know, where the NLC are threatening to go on strike. Yeah. Um, and they're saying only the president can stop can them stop from them, going on yes, strike. So with stop. this information in the public domain that, you know, even the lowest paid workers are now, as at last month, according to Ngige, being paid 30,000, mm. it somehow challenges you know are they uh, should they wait should they wait or to hear uh -huh. but um you know we're fully behind anybody who is holding the government to account because this matter has been on the table since before the election mm -hmm. so anything that will make them stand up and, and actually fulfill their obligations to the people we're behind them 100 percent yeah mm -hmm. all right so grab a copy of the nation newspaper and that story is on the front page uh, but it's continued on page eight uh, and then at the back of the nation newspaper again it's a column Thinker, worker, listener, please grab a copy for yourself and find out what it is mm. about. Um, as we quickly look at the Punch newspaper. Now, the Punch says Nigeria to end uh, $6.35 billion in taxes and royalties. NMPC says on page 32, Gankos may halt operations over new admin charge. That's on page 32. Um, Ola Kunri's mother, a Fenifer berates police for poor investigation. That's on page 55, already displayed on your screen there. And then my parents waiting to sell South African properties. A 17-year-old retainee says that, um, page two. And the big story there, of course, is the $9.6 billion mm -hmm. uh, judgment. Malami, IG, MFLA lead federal uh, government team to UK legal battle. You find out all about this on page two. PNID submits list of targeted Nigerian assets on Thursday. And then we have picture story here. Four killed and 74 arrested in Lagos court clashes. You find that story on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And then down here it says, Oshun threatens to prosecute Oyetola's portrait seller. <laughs> uh, sellers. That's on page 56. And um, victim identifies suspected rapist who stole her pants. That's on page five. I was nicknamed Senior Copper during NYC orientation. 60-year-old US-based Nigerian. Mm, that's on page three. 60-year-old. Uh, mm. That's on page three. Find out what it is. <laughs> and then doctors, dentists uh, face tribunal over professional lapses. Mm. On page 57, uh, lightning kills 36 cows grazing on Ondo sacred land. Mm. Mm. That's so on many, page So many 50. interesting stories. <laughs> On page 56, mm. and uh, Ogun may create two new varsities on page 58. Uh, this newspaper has got all kinds of everything. Headlines, here. yes. I mean, I, I'm happy when you talk of stories remaining in the headline. Mm. I was happy when you read out that Olakunri's mother is saying, you know, you're not investigating in, in a thorough enough way mm. for my liking. So a that's a story that many of us may have forgotten mm. because at the time it, it came out very boldly and people and were worried wonder. that it might trigger a reaction, but everything just seems to have calm down. But I'm happy that we're, you know, we're still being reminded that the police do owe the family and, and the nation really mm. a duty Let's to see. thoroughly investigate that because we weren't satisfied that they had drawn any you know, conclusive Conclusion. yeah, um, conclusions on that matter. So you know, some said it was bandits, but clearly there were the hallmarks of you know, targeted killing. So we want mm. to you know, identify who they are. I think we were up to that standard. We can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm happy that story is, is still in the newspapers. Yeah. Um, the cultists, you know, the 74 cultists. In Lake, I mean, when you read the story, it's, it just sounds it's like chilling. something out of the Wild West. You know, apparently th this clash was happening, you know, in the full visibility of the public. And mm. I think a uh, rider was caught in the crossfire. Um, the bullet, bullet caught the rider, but I think a bike rider. Mm. Um, so the fact that they've, they, there's so many of them, I, I, again, of them. I, I want to read into it and say, maybe at a time when a lot of our youths feel disempowered because they're not sure you know, where they're going to get their financial security from, you know, even their career security from, they may find some kind of confidence in being part of cult groups. Well, that's even though nothing justifies, I mean... I mean, you, you've, you've maybe you know, interacted with mm. a story close to this, yes, so you realize yes. that it doesn't have a happy ending. You know? mm. So this is an it opportunity to tell the young people that this is the wrong place to go to for security. In mm. fact, you find the very opposite. So you go in there looking for security, but you find that you're in a very insecure place indeed because these people, are, they said the matter hasn't ended. Even though they've been apprehended, they're still you know, breathing out threats to one another that they're still going to clash again. I mean, there's no... There's, there's there's nothing there that's positive, really, mm. you know, so. There's nothing at all positive, mm. even in the art of courtism itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so, um, 
victims identify suspected rapists who still have Yes, that's another interesting story because that, you know, apparently this person has operated prior to now, I think molested another woman, but thankfully was identified and then they traced this victim back to an organization, they call it a syndicate of people who perform these one chance Pain. operation. So we're really dealing with, you know, organized crime in a way that I haven't been aware of in the mm. uh, I, mean, I haven't been aware of in the past. And I'm just concerned when you hear titles like Kingpin and Syndicate and you're dealing with, you know, these kind of crimes that are targeting the average citizen. It's yeah. not like you're going after the, the people you yeah, think, like, not that I'm trying to encourage that either, yeah. but you're targeting the everyday man and just generally making the environment inhospitable for people. Mm. So definitely we need to be just as strategic as they're being to bring them to book and make sure we just cleanse the system of, of this sort of psychology that you can go about targeting innocent civilians mm -hmm. in the way that they're doing. I mean, it's horrible. Mm. Mm. OK, so any more thoughts on PNID? Or we, we well, you know, <laughs> I know that the entourage going to PNID are impressive enough. You are know. you happy with the team? I was going to ask you. <laughs> yes, I am. I am. I think the uh, finance minister is um, MFLA. MFLA uh, is C, yeah, CBN mm. uh, governor is going. So mm. they're trying to take it from uh, Lai Mohammed. I'm not sure what he's going to do, but he's well, among them. So, you know, look, hopefully. Manami is also among yes, them. Yes, happily. So let's see where they go with this. I think this is like a landmark case. There's no doubt in our minds. If we're able to score a point here, mm -hmm. it may just rejuvenate the country's confidence that no, uh, we're not fighting against ourselves mm -hmm. so much as, you know, we have something to fight for as, as a nation because this will definitely be a victory for Nigeria if we manage to avert this, do you say, threat hanging over us. Mm. Mm. So well, we're all, all eyes on, on their trip to the UK. And we'll see what it uh, brings forth. Mm. And that's it for the Punch newspaper. And behind the Punch newspaper is another column, uh, Onyema, Nigeria's pride and apostle mm. of peace. Yes. Um, I read an interesting article, he, the, you know, an interview with him. And okay. I was fascinated because I wasn't expecting his tone. He was very, pass you know, I, I won't say pacifist, but there's a tone in which he, he seemed to be looking at the unity of Nigeria. I want okay. to believe that there, what he said is what was really at his heart. And he was basically saying, look, he's not encouraging people to go and attack uh, South African businesses here. He and he was thanking the president for permitting him to go and commending the president's statesmanship in mm. terms of how he, he, didn't, he didn't allow himself to be provoked in the face of, you know, people pushing him to react. Mm. And uh, he felt that, you know, the message sent by him by sending the airpiece to retrieve our people was much more a much more strong message than targeting. So it made the South Africans recognize that they had something to lose. He feels it was like, a, do you say, a, a, a turning point. Uh -huh. and, and the way he relays the story, you know, we were here hearing how the, the first airplane was kept on the ground. Yes. And, you know, the, the engines, you know, they going gave, on. Uh, and, and, and apparently the back story, according to him, and I have to believe him, is that the South African government were suddenly threatened by the thought of all these Nigerians. So they started, they started threatening them and saying, if you go, you, you won't be allowed won't come to come back, back again. again. And, you know, and some of them then were panicked because they had property there they had to sell. And so they were just suddenly, it makes me see that the South African government realized. Mm, it was a eureka in, moment. Yeah, them, so that you actually have something to lose mm. when these people, and it's not like they are the bulk of Nigerians, they're just a fraction. But, it's like the, the scales drop from their eyes. So that's fascinating to, to realize that they were actually trying to. I was wondering, why do you let the people, why are you holding them back when you were yeah, chasing them away? So make up your minds. Mm. But um, let's hope that, you know, they're having a brain, do you say a brain wave? All right. We hope so too for them. And that's it on uh, the Punch newspaper as we quickly move on to the Vanguard. And here it says, minimum wage, only Buhari can stop our planned mm. strike. That's Labour saying, you find that story on page uh, five already displayed, says government negotiating team working for vested interests. And then federal government has commenced partial payments of 30,000 minimum wage in Gige. Mm -hmm. And then laments high rate of unemployment expresses fears of social unrest, if not tackled. Um, we have also profit decline worsens in the insurance sector, and police uncover baby selling maternity homes in Lagos. Mm. This is scary. It is a bit. Uh, insecurity again. Why Yoruba feel really threatened? Um, find out what this is about on page 42. State of the nation. We are living in dangerous times, says Catholic bishops. On page 11, and then I can to a federal government, don't be selective in your fight against corruption. You see that displayed uh, on your screen, but the story is on page 9. And lightning kills 36 cows on Sacred Hill in Ondo. That's on page 6. Also, we have a picture story here of our president, I think it's a at his arrival in New York ahead of the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly. This was yesterday. Yes, I can imagine. I, I, I just quickly tackled a bit about the 76 cows. I know it sounds a bit... <laughs> 
a bit um, like but it's on the same comedy. I mean, I, I know I'm making it sound a bit mm. um, like I'm amused by it, but I'm not. Mm. The, the, my reaction when I saw that the lightning killed and you know the first statement, "Act of God," I just I held my breath. I said, "Let me see how the Miati Allah." take this, you know, because mm. until you see how they take it, you're not sure whether well, an whether this is going to be a quiet oh, matter. You know, but they said no, that there's nothing they can do. They're telling the people to take heart. That is an act of God. And I went, <sighs> mm, <okay. laughs> because, you know, act of God, whether you call it an act of God is, is whether they perceive it to be an act of God. You know, yes. any slight thing could just ignite unnecessary disruption in, mm. in the polity. So, uh, unfortunately, I wonder how this lightning ev event happened. I'm sure it's a very well, rare occurrence. It's a, a sacred hill, so maybe it's something uh, spiritual. You see, so you know, there's all sorts of, but let's just be grateful <laughs> that so far nobody's uh, pointing the finger at anyone. So, mm -hmm. what a relief. Um, I know there are other stories you, you mentioned that struck my eye. Please remind me. There's another, um, okay, the ICANN. Okay. Yes, the ICANN. You know, again, you Don't know, when you, and even the Catholic right. bishops, I want to put them together. When you have, and I think there's another article where Shoni Barrier, uh, a character, a gentleman called Shoni Barrier, is also making his own statement saying, you know, ticking time bomb. People are, they continue to issue these warnings. Mm -hmm. And initially, I, 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 I used to feel, you know, why do we keep stating the obvious? You're just making people feel on. But I feel that sometimes people feel they have to sound the alarm, that, you know, one voice is not enough. If we continue to repeat the same thing, perhaps somewhere, somehow, mm -hmm. somebody will take note. So I was surprised that, the, you know, this group of accountants who met for a conference mm -hmm. are the ones actually sounding the alarm and saying, look, don't go after select people, you know, give us a sense of justice. Again, we heard the Catholic bishop saying something similar yeah. um, previously, and they, here they are again saying, well, look, we know you're doing your best about security, but, you know, it's not nearly enough because we're still living in an environment that most of us don't feel secure Safe enough. So uh, clearly there, there's more work to be done and you really need to, for me, security is the number one priority. I, I think I it supersedes everything yeah. else. And that's telling you something because we have serious issues with, you know, education, serious issues with, you know, poverty. Mm -hmm. And yet... I would still put security as above yeah, because, all that. Yeah, because I mean, everything we're thriving is safe. You have to be alive to be able to even seek for a better life mm. to, to to begin with. So um, I take note of that, and I you know, and then the issue of you know talking about the Yoruba people, mm -hmm. you know that kind of language. I appreciate it that we do have identities outside. You know, within Nigeria, we have Igbo, Yoruba. But when you start seeing people looking out for those interests, mm -hmm. it's also for me speaks towards the sense that there is an instability. You know, because otherwise, why would you have to preserve your own group mm -hmm. issues as opposed to the national yeah, issue? Yes. You know, it would be like within a family, you know, you, you go to one circle and you start. One. It doesn't, normally that's not the way we look at a nation's prosperity. We tend to look at all, if all of us are in it together, then all of us are, have the same issues at stake. But no, instead you have people, you know, going into various groups and demanding their own uh, particular interests. Mm. And you could do with the, maybe the appointment of Akintoye. He also may want to be wanting to leave his stamp mm -hmm. on his um, new position. All right, and that's it. Um, th th this story is quite uh, frightening. Uh, police uncover babies selling maternity homes yes. in Lagos. Yes. That's on page seven. Uh, yes. It's even worrying to hear that, you know. Yes, it is. But again, I have to still go back to my initial position, which is I'm glad they're, because they're there. Okay. <laughs> you know, so if you don't uncover them, they're still there. So uncovering them at least is a fall. positive. Yeah. Yes, we're surprised that in, in Lagos, a place like Lagos, you could be operating like this. But clearly there's a demand for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. They're, mm. they're rich people who are willing to pay exorbitant prices to have children bought so to speak. This is scary. Um, to think of it, mm, even to buy a child. Yes, yes. It's completely it's, I guess in other systems, they would have a more uh, legit, legitimate way of going about yeah, it. Adoption, adoption perhaps, or even surrogacy, surrogacy. But I don't know. Maybe here we want to pretend the baby is ours. I'm not quite sure why we go through these, these routes, because I'm sure they're not paying much less than they would pay if they if did they things go through properly. Adoption yeah. and other ways. Okay, so please find out for yourself uh, what the details of this story on page seven of the Vanguard newspaper. And on the back of the Vanguard newspaper is some sports news. Uh, Joy of six for club spin. Everton boss slammed for keeping Iwobi on bench. Togo Dom's turn, he goes 4-1. I'm still under contract with Nigeria. The Nebi denies links to Indian job. Rogers lots in DD after win against Tottenham. And then choose England at your own risk, Fashionu tells Abraham. Mm. Is Abraham. I was trying to remember the name of the... Because when I saw the story of Tom Murray, mm. and, you know, he's saying he's Canadian, he's British, he's Nigerian, so he has the pick of all three. He'll decide. <laughs> His future is laid out in front of him. Mm. And then, but there, I'm sure there's another young man recently that was in the news trying to decide between. And there he is, Abraham. Mm, Abraham. You know, so, you know, I guess it still tells you that talent 
has a market. You know, your it talent does. will make room for you. As, as people still cry and say the country is not where it should be, if you hone your talent, if you develop it, you'll find that you have access to a market that's wider than your immediate. You have options. Yeah, so you don't choices. have to feel constrained by your circumstances. I'm happy for them, so I can't even say I'm unhappy. Yes, we want them to remain here, but I'm happy that they even have the option I to have choose. Better options yes. than that. Okay, and that's it on the Vanguard newspaper. And we move quickly now to this day in the interest of time, and it says, there's a picture story here, celebrating King's College at 110. And then report electronic payment transaction rise to 231 trillion naira. Now, uh, Gencos threatened to hands off power plants over payment plan. That's on page eight of this day. And Southeast gov governors reject livestock plan. Uh, that's on the front page and then continued on page 12. Military sets up, sets, steps up fight against insurgency, asks Northeast residents for identification. Now once Borno, Yobe inhabitants against harboring fleeing insurgents, Senate on same page with Buhari on security, Ignomi says Sani. Uh, that's, th those are the major... There are quite a few, and I'm, I'm happy this mm. newspaper seems to have a fresh set of headlines to yes. the others. So um, please, if I forget, remind me of some of them so I, I try okay. and cover them. Um, when you hear that the Senate is supporting the president, yes, from one perspective, you like to think that that's positive because you know there won't be on due delay in terms of passing no, the, yes. um, the, the budget. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, sometimes you, you feel that mm, the reason they're there is for, to execute what we call the separation of powers. So you check the excesses of the executive. The executive is checked by the judiciary and the legislature. The legislature. So you don't have this sort of everybody is flowing in one direction yeah, and there's no... All okay, yeah, so because um, you know, when you hear, I think it was uh, Senator Sani who seemed to be saying, yes. oh, we're happy with you know the deposit charges um, are you speaking on behalf of the Nigerians have you asked the people you're representing yeah, are. if they are happy nobody is against the fact that you want to you know reduce the cash we transact with and you want to make Nigeria more cashless but there are other issues at stake have you mm -hmm. given people enough incentive to go cashless because we're still being charged when we make electronic transactions the real the needs of the people thing. are you making you know are you are you offering a service that enables the people to feel that you have the right to levy us in this way mm. against the backdrop of so many other pressures that we're facing so I don't think that position you've taken is an informed one mm -hmm. uh, you know that's what I would say to Senator Sani so yes it's good that you're cooperating where there's need for cooperation but that's not why you're there. Okay. You're there to represent our interests. So first and foremost, try and feel the pulse of the people before you flow with the executive, so mm. to speak. Because if all of you are singing from the same hymn sheet, then who's listening to our voices? Yeah, exactly. you know, so uh, we're not entirely satisfied with that statement he makes. Because when you read his interview, he seems to be agreeing with almost everything the, gov gov you know, the president mm. is doing. And I'm not sure that's the temperature of the people out there. OK, so um, the military steps up a fight against insurgency. In the news this morning, they were saying. Um, identification card. Yeah, I, I have to identified. support that on the face of it, unless we hear more information. It looks like a positive move. Because mm. they're dealing with a problem where they can't identify some of the people who are flowing in into this part of the country mm. and you know some of them are alleged to have been coming in from outside non-Nigerians and adding to the problems we're facing so maybe and we hope if they can enforce this strictly we'll be able to root out these elements or at least make it harder for them to mobilize themselves around mm. our nation so let's see how that develops. And good work for the military also because they are able they they're being creative they're because yeah. They're, yeah and then because their hideouts also is being um, quite cleared so to speak by yeah. the military yeah. so in the interest of time I can I will mm. just move now to the back page of this day a newspaper, uh, Nigeria's Confounded Judiciary. Uh, that's by Shaka Momodu. Please find out for yourself what it is about uh, from the news, uh, this day newspaper. We will quickly run to complete spots. Uh, mm. And again, we have Tomori yet to decide international <laughs> future, just what Ekene was talking about as England, Nigeria, and Canada joined the chase for undecided Chelsea defenders. Six out of six, uh, that's Chelsea, one to two, Liverpool. Uh, please, save us land for benching uh, Iwobi. Liverpool are doing very well. Oh, I, I, yeah, lots of their supporters are impressed. They seem to be on a winning streak, just like the Tigers. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, and then on the back page of it, Mourinho expresses concern over the jail deal. Um, please find out for yourself what all of this is about. Juventus to offload Dybala in January. Uh, Bakayoko considers Monaco stay. Uh, any, any more thoughts on the sports? No, I, except it's that I was just thinking philosophically concerning sports in general, that it, it has that ability to lift one's spirits. Because mm. when you look, if you look around, we want to win. We want to be behind the winning team. And so when things around us don't seem to be going our way, at least you can get behind There's someone you know, and feel a part of their success. And I think that's the, the effect of sports. All right. It's, and it's 
on that note that we'll end. Thank you very much, Akene, for, for your thoughts uh, this morning. And we'll wrap up the, of the press, the program where we dissect the, the uh, newspaper dailies and tell you what it is about. Please grab copies of the newspapers we've talked about and know what it is about in depth. We'll this, do this again tomorrow here on Plus TV Africa, 8.30 of the press. And I am Amaka Okuyi. Have yourselves a good morning.